survival games have taken over in 2024 they're breaking records there are a lot of new amazing survival games that have been released that are coming out even older survival games are releasing massive content updates massive promises so i'm going to be taking a look at which survival games that you guys should be playing in 2024 which games are worth checking out which games are great that are making a comeback so let's jump right into the list the first game on the list number five is myth of empires myth of empires did release very recently but you guys have probably heard about this game from before because this game did release a couple of years ago but it came under a lot of controversy because it got lawsuits and they have to deal with all the legal trouble uh, because the, apparently there were some assets or some coding that was stolen from other survival games but now they have finally released myth of empires 1.0 now myth of empires 1.0 is has released on steam on pc but will also be releasing on console and what is great about myth of empires 1.0 i'm going to be calling it 1.0 is basically it's a brand new game like they have taken the core of myth of empires but 1.0 is bringing new uh, designs a new world new content new changes new crafting system basically most of the stuff that you're used to from the myth of empires is brand new with this launch so you can kind of look at it as myth of empires but a brand new game now what is amazing about myth of empires is it has up to a hundred player servers and there's rumors about that increasing in the future so this massive servers which gives you kind of like a rust vibe uh, when it comes to survival games and usually survival games they're around like 10 player servers they don't usually have this massive world and the reason for these massive world is because in this game there's a lot of mmo features when it comes to uh the myth of empires they have a lot of pvp action guild clans that you'll be joining up with other players or friends making clans making guilds controlling territory and fighting against other people on in your server in your world so a lot of like mmo features even the gearing is very progressive where you'll be gearing like in an mmo getting the better gear getting those better stats and fighting against them but it is a survival game. You start naked in this massive world uh, with nothing, exploring the world, fighting boars, getting grass, gathering linen to make different bows, make different gear, make different items. You're going to be cooking to survive. So everything is a survival game. You'll be building. And what is really, I think, the best thing about uh myth of empire is the base building the base building in this game is insane massive base building big world to explore and again with the whole territory pvp system in this game it does get really exciting so if you guys are checking out myth of empires i would suggest this is more of like a multiplayer survival game you can't play it as a solo of course but because of the clans because of the pvp and because of all the action it is advised that you are playing it with friends now number four on this list we have a classic valheim now valheim you guys have probably heard about it released in 2020 one with p on pc and on xbox and i have to be honest valheim is the survival game that i have the most hours in but i'm not putting it on the list because i am biased when valheim came out it was sensational a lot of people enjoyed playing it i enjoyed playing it it was unique it was exciting it had like a good balance between a lot of exploration massive world difficult content but also very casual friendly so it had a lot of good stuff a lot of players could play it and have fun with it there were like five ma major bosses a lot of monsters to explore a lot of biomes to explore you could go around in your ship collect materials your base used to get invaded and the base building in this game was absolutely fantastic too so valheim was very exciting i think the downfall for valheim was that they took a long time with releasing new content updates they added a six boss i think last year uh, so uh, the content was very lackluster but the game itself the core of the game everything from the grinding to the crafting it was fun it was exciting and the 10 player servers was like 
perfect for uh, playing with friends or even playing solo. I played this game bunch solo, but also played it friends. Uh, and uh, I had a blast basically playing it. But now they have shown a roadmap and 2024 is looking really good for Valheim. There's a lot of new content updates that they're going to be adding to the game. A lot of new biomes, new monsters, new crafting, new gear. Um, so overall, I think when it comes from... Uh, if you're a solo player or team player or would like to play with others, this game is a very good fit for you. The combat is very fun. The combat is very exciting. This game fits good for both hardcore players and casual grinders. So overall, I think Valheim making a comeback in 2024 when survival games are popping up is absolutely perfect. So hopefully the, these content updates and the roadmap, the, the roadmap looks really good hopefully they'll deliver on it and overall valheim is a very well polished game and it is a certified good title with a lot of active players till this day so you cannot go wrong with checking out uh, valheim number three on this list we have nightingale now nightingale released very recently on pc and you can't play it yourself and see what the game is all about but let's be real everybody everywhere you look content wise everybody has gotten sponsored by this game so there's a lot of stuff that people don't know about the game because people don't say it in their videos or in their content. But Nightingale has a six player servers. It is a decent survival game. You can play it. There's a lot of survival features in this game. A lot of fantasy features. They have realms. Uh, it's the word they use mini dungeons for progression they have bosses enemies and puzzles so you have everything that you're looking for in a survival game uh building bases in this game that you can do however i have to say playing nightingale myself i did feel like uh, i spent a lot of time building bases uh, gathering items getting items uh, and not enough time actually exploring because what I like about survival games is the exploration of it, being able to go out, grind, farm what I want, uh, find monsters, do puzzles. But while this game, I feel like, pushes you more to spend bases, gather items, a lot of stuff together when you're crafting an item, I did not like that at all. And the combat, I have to say, when it comes to the combat, the combat is fun, it is polished, but it's very, like, straightforward. It's very, like, hack and slash feel to the game. The bosses aren't too... Uh, engaging in the combat is very like simple uh, and I did not uh, like that at all however the game does have this fantasy feel to it and it is a very enjoyable game they can both play solo and in co-op it has a lot of crafting it has a lot of grinding uh, but I think the main thing for me when it comes to survival games is like the combat it's the exploration I feel like Nightingale does not fit that but if you're more of a very gr if you look for a grindy survival games which usually survival games should be grindy Nightingale is a good fit for you because it it, it is really grindy and it does take a lot of time and you have if you have enough an hours to put into the game it will be a good fit for you however i do think this game does need a little bit of work on ui and optimization there was issues that i had with the game where the game didn't feel fully optimized you had some issues with the game and the ui is very outdated but overall i feel like this game is more for the grinder than the casual player number two on this list i have enshrouded and try to release also this year on pc and console and this game has 16 player servers that you can play with and co-op with and what i really like about this game the reason i put it so high is because it has a really fun combat. It's like an action RPG combat, but it's a survival game. Uh, really fun combat. You can choose between playing melee, range, magic skills. There's skill trees in this. You can block, you can jump, you can dodge. So there's a lot of good combat when it comes for being a survival game i did really enjoy uh the combat in this game and what i also really like about this game is a lot of focus on adventure there's such a massive world to explore but it's not like those other survival games where every world is different every the world is the same but it's massive and there's a bunch of stuff so it's for a bunch of content and the, the future for this game looks very exciting the devs have teased a lot of good stuff for the game that was going to be coming and i think over time, Enshroud will probably be on this list. Enshroud will be the game with one of the most content uh, and potential 
uh, from this list. But this game is a survival game, but it does, again, gives me a lot of like MMO feel to it, everything for the combat. But this game also has a bunch of questing. You'll be exploring Massive World, finding NPCs. They could be giving you different quests with different rewards. So uh, while you're uh, doing these quests, you will be progressing in this game. It has like mini dungeons that you will do for progression and what is really cool is you don't have to focus on this quest questing and doing what the game wants you to you can explore like you want you can explore this massive world you can focus on surviving you can build bases you can go to different settlements though it's a massive world amazing monsters there's even certain areas which uh use the enshrouded timer uh which lets you explore certain areas for a certain amount of time unless you have like different items to counter that but it gives you like a uh, sense of urgency it's basically like you know being underwater needing oxygen so those type of places which is really cool uh you know and there's a bunch of again npcs that like, gives you both quests and missions and rewards but also npcs that will help you with crafting blacksmithing hunting etc and what i really like about this i know it goes back to the mmo i really like mmos but what i really like about this is a skill tree too when you're doing these missions when you're doing these quests and everything you can make your own builds in this game so you can focus on being a melee fighter being a hunter being a survivalist there's different skills they give you movement speeds you know jumps etc so there's a bunch of things that you can unlock and you can make your character like you want to but it's overall a survival game you know you start off you need to survive with your friends you explore this massive world you need to craft you need to build bases and you need to explore the world do these dungeons uh, you know go to different settlements and each settlement is different each uh, place is different each monster is different so overall i think this game is really super fun you can be played both solo and with friends and co-op um, and overall i think this game can be played both as a casual player uh, as a hardcore grinder you can play it uh, any way you want it you want to focus on questing progress and you can do it you want to focus on exploration you can spend hours and hours just exploring in this game and i think again this the future for enshrouded and the roadmap we have for enshrouded i think this is definitely the game that will uh do the best going forward now, number one on this list, we of course have PAL World that I released this year for PC and Xbox. This game has 32 player servers and this game has breaking all kinds of records. And you guys can probably tell in the background here, I am a Pokemon fan, but I have nothing but positive things to say about PAL World. I think PAL World has done something that hopefully will make Pokemon do something even better. But this game is great. Everywhere from going out uh, and catching these pals in the open world, to fighting with them, to making them work for you, to e eating them. I know, it goes crazy. To making different combos. The game is really fun. It's very difficult. And it also gives me that MMO vibe to it. Fighting these difficult raids dungeons these boss fights uh and uh making it very easy for like you as a, a player to progress in this game too because you start off with the ba building base build all this stuff and you make these pals work for you uh things become easier becomes more automated so you can do certain things you explore while not focusing too much on just building items and focusing right you can go out you can explore the game is fun it's really difficult at times especially when you're playing solo but it's, you can play both solo and with friends it has 32 players it's a very high number for a survival game and the future for this game looks very promising they're going to be introducing pvp to the game possibly bigger servers harder raids crazy biomes and the world in this game is massive and the world is actually fun to explore because you don't know what you meet in the open world you don't know it's always like something you're looking for either it's like a new lucky pal or a pal with better stats uh so it's always something that you're looking for and it's fun just going around not knowing what you meet in the open world so pal world i've had a blast playing it a really fun game and the future for power looks absolutely amazing too unless they get sued by pokemon and shut down but i don't think that's happening but power again 
looks absolutely amazing so i hope you guys liked my list i would love to hear you guys' opinion of which of these five games survival games you like the most or if there's a survival game i didn't include i know there's a other bunch of good survival games out there that you would want me to put a list that i would put on the list or v rising you have subnautica a bunch of the survival games but my top five list is this list i think it's solid list there's a bunch of new games in here but also games that you can enjoy playing you probably go back to if you played Valheim in the fast great game to go back to so I would love to hear you guys' opinion but 2024 definitely the year for survival games if you guys have made a survival game many years ago this year is probably the year that you want to update it and add some new content to it you know people eat that up so I had a blast playing survival games and I'm looking forward to the future games but thank you so much for watching check out this video right here and I'll see you guys next time bye bye